Hello. We systematically reviewed the literature to determine the role and efficacy of non-surgical treatments for early Dupuytren's disease and to provide an evidence base for the management of patients with early disease. So our conflict of interest declaration. Using a PCOS analysis, we would review patients with early disease who had received pharmacological treatment, physical therapy or radiotherapy. Outcomes could be measured using patient reported outcomes, physical measures, clinical assessment and clinical observation. We would consider all study designs, including randomised trials, prospective and retrospective case studies, case series, conference abstracts and letters. There is con currently no accepted definition of early disease, but it's generally described by the presence of palmar nodules with limited or no extension deficit. Surgery is usually performed for flexion deformities of 30 degrees or more. For our analysis, we included the following. If we could clearly identify a cohort with MCP and PIP flexion deformities of 30 degrees or less, that is, a digital total of 60 degrees or less. If the patients were described as having early disease, and we also included two Biana grades up to 45 degrees total digital flexion deformity. Databases were searched systematically using broad search terms to capture all relevant publications of studies published in English. From 957 studies, six 118 abstracts were screened by two independent reviewers. 66 full uh, texts were examined, resulting in 15 studies. That was eight pharmacological, four physical therapy, and three radiotherapy studies. All included studies were observational and graded level of evidence four or five, assessed using the Oxford Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine grading, with one being high and four, five being the lowest level. The studies comprised ten case series and five case studies. Only one case series described results for a cohort comprising exclusively of early DD patients. That's Ketchum. The remaining studies included early Dupuytren's disease patients within their cohorts of patients with more advanced disease, according to our inclusion criteria. The results of three case studies reporting clinical observation of the use of intramuscular, oral and topical steroids were inconclusive. Ketchum reported in observational improvement of, of nodule consistency um, in 62 patients following intranodular injections of triamcinolone at six-week intervals, each patient receiving three injections at each site on average. Ease of subsequent injection was used as an outcome measure. However, these were not blinded assessments. Recurrence of 50% was reported at one to three years. There were also mild adverse events, but these resolved within six months. Results of vitamin E were varied with the largest study showing no benefit, again, outcomes were based on clinical observation. A case study of hyperbaric oxygen showed minor improvement in one patient. <laughs> Physical therapies reported using objective measures showing a trend of improvement in splinting and an improvement of grip strength following ultrasound and stretching. However, numbers of patients in all the studies were too small to draw any conclusions. Radiotherapy showed improvement of nodule consistency and by clinical observation in the majority of patients. In the larger study by Kielholtz, <coughs> patients were treated at six-week intervals on five occasions with a total dose of 30 grays, with improvement in size, number and consistency of nodules. Total doses were similar in the studies by Finney and Lukacs. Toxicity was reported by two studies, 
but this was for the total cohort, which included patients with more advanced disease, and data were not available for patients with early disease. <coughs> Based on the limited data, we can show that we, we see that intralesional injection with steroids appears to improve nodule consistency, that studies using splintage should suggest improvement in digital extension, and that radiotherapy appears to improve nodule consistency. However, there were limitations to the studies. Quality was poor, with no blinding or randomization, and predominantly subjective outcome measures. Adverse events were reported by some studies. Study numbers of those treated using splintage were small. Based on our systematic review, we recommend that a clear definition of early, degree, uh, of early disease should be agreed, that treatment outcomes should be measured using objective reproducible methods, and that safety should be reported and described in all studies. Thank you.